AMD is down an enormous 50% in the last year alone. Is this the biggest buying opportunity or not? Well, to help you answer that question, I'm going to take you back to the basics and run you through the financials to determine if AMD is a good buy or not. <music> So I haven't been posting a lot of videos lately. In fact, I haven't been posting for months and that's because I've been pretty busy with our businesses in the back end and one of which is the stock system that we have created. So Justin and I got pretty tired of going through fucking spreadsheets every single day and trying to evaluate stocks. So Justin and I developed the stock system which we will be making available to the public pretty soon and to do that we need the help of beta testers. So if you want to be part of the first beta testers, simply go to stockscreen.app click on the logo and then sign up as a beta tester. So with that being said, let's go to stockscreen.app and look at AMD. So this is AMD, as you can see year to date, which is January, we're on the 11th today, it is up 5.9%, but let's go back in history and let's see what has been happening with AMD. As you can see in the last year, it's down 50.4%. So zooming out to the last five years though, you can see it is up 466% and from the highs to today, it's down about 56%. So with that being said, let's go look at AMD on stockscreen.app. So this is the overview and the values of course is in USD. Now the market cap is 108.4 billion and so is the enterprise value. Now the PE ratio is sitting at 42.8 but to be fair on AMD they did an acquisition and that also lowered the net income. So the PE ratio doesn't look that great. It's pretty meaningless looking at the PE ratio in this case then. Going over to the financial stats then, let's look at the revenue. The revenue looking pretty good, sitting at 22.8 billion. The debt is only sitting at 2.8 billion. If we compare that with the cash, the cash is sitting at 5.59 billion. So these guys do have a lot of cash on their balance sheet and it definitely is more than the debt. So that is really looking very, very healthy. Looking at the equity, they're sitting with equity of 54.4 billion. So also looking really good. Net income, 2.27 billion. And then of course, lastly, the free cash flow is sitting at a healthy 3.4 billion. Looking at the trading info, shares outstanding 1.63 billion, the insider holdings 0.35%, the short interest only sitting at 2%, so nothing to be concerned about, and the institutional holdings sitting at 71%. So let's take a look at the income statement first. So looking at the revenue, as you can see, very healthy. They have been doing really well. As we know, they also have been taking a lot of market share away from the likes of Intel. So as you can see, revenue year on year growth looking really really, really good. So is the gross profit. The gross profit have been growing in line with the revenue. So that is really good. Now looking at the operating income, the net income, the earnings per share and the shares outstanding. As you can see, there has been a decline in the trailing 12 months. Firstly, looking at the operating income, as you can see, a decline in the trailing 12 months, as we can see with a lot of other companies as well. And then looking at the net income, as you can see, a considerable drop as well. But like I said, they did do an acquisition as well. So using the net income for a DCF calculator at this point is pretty meaningless. Now looking at the earnings per share, because the net income is down, obviously the, earn the earnings per share is also down along with that. Looking at the balance sheet now, we always need to look at the balance sheet because that tells you how healthy the company is. The assets looking great, as you can see, really good growth. Liabilities though have been growing a lot, especially in the trailing 12 months as well. And then as you can see, equity as well, looking really healthy, sitting at 54.4 billion. Now let's go look at the free cash flow, the cash flow statement. First we look at the operating cash flow and then the free cash flow. Those two metrics are really, really important. So looking at the operating cash flow and the free cash flow, as you can see, really good growth. They have been growing every single year, now sitting at a very healthy 3.4 4 billion in free cash flows. So the company does have enough money to do acquisitions and to buy back its stock or whatever else it wants to do, right? But now going over to the fundamental scoring, we are going to put them through our scoring system. This is our IP. This is something we have created ourselves. It just makes it easier for us to evaluate stocks, right? So putting it through our fundamental system, as you can see, the PE ratio is not between one and 25. In fact, it's sitting at 42.84. But like I said, it's also a bit meaningless looking at the PE ratio in this case because they also did acquisitions. But now looking at the net margin, the net margin 
is below 10%. Actually, it's sitting at 9.96. So it's just, just shy of that 10%. I actually feel bad for scrolling them down for this. But anyway, here we are. This is what the system is telling us. The net equity is positive. It's actually sitting at a positive 54.5 billion. And then unfortunately, shareholders have been diluted in the trailing 12 months. So I guess they were taking advantage of that higher stock price earlier last year and they obviously issued more shares and that also brought in more money for the company now moving on to the debt screener the debt is very very healthy for this company looking at amd it really is looking exceptional the debt to equity ratio is sitting at 5.3 percent the current ratio is sitting at 2.16 and then the free cash flow to debt is sitting at 65.42 looking at momentum you'll see it looks absolutely amazing basically on every single metric they have been growing every single year year on year the revenue gross profit operating income net income operating cash flow and the free cash flow have been growing every single year now looking at the growth questions i absolutely love looking at these metrics because this also gives me an indication of what i can expect to get back as a shareholder in the future so looking at the return on equity this shows you how the company is retaining equity within the company this is sitting at 7.37 so this is not looking that great my benchmark is usually 10 percent now of course you can add your own numbers in here mine is 10 percent but you can change it to whatever metric you like so that's also why we need beta testers if you'd like to test the system out go to stockscreen.app and then click on the logo to be part of the beta testers the return on assets this is sitting at 4.73% also less than the 10% that I require but then looking at the return on invested capital I love looking at this because this tells me how the management is investing the com company's cash and in this case it is sitting at 44.86 so that is looking incredible really 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 good results that is exceptional the earnings per share also have been growing by a compounded annual growth rate of 52.93% so really really impressive for AMD but as we know in the last two years Things have also been looking really good for the semiconductor industry. The semiconductor industry is, of course, a cyclical industry, and they just went through one of the good cycles in the market. So they have been making a lot of money, but the problem with cyclical stocks is something that goes up must come down. In this case, we are seeing that drop already with AMD. Whether or not this is the bottom, I absolutely don't know, but I do think we probably will see more pain ahead. So let's go look at the summary. As you can see on the fundamentals, they didn't score that great. But to be fair on them, like I said, they did an acquisition, so the net income is down. And then on the margins, the margin is just shy of that 10%. So if it wasn't for those two, the fundamentals would have looked pretty good. The debt is looking amazing, momentum looking amazing, and growth also looking really really good so looking at this fundamental screener it tells me that AMD is a solid company the fundamentals are looking good it is most probably a company that I'll be looking at to invest right but when it comes to buying a stock there are a few additional things you need to look at first is there a competitive advantage well with AMD there is and if you want to know more about the business side of the company then go look back to our previous videos we have done a lot of videos in AMD which I'm not going to go into right now but yes I do have a competitive advantage but the other thing is you you also need to look at the pricing so let's go look at the pricing so looking at the free cash flow models i know you guys absolutely love these models and you guys always want to know at what price you should be buying it so in this case i'm not going to do a dcf calculation on the earnings per share because like i said they did an acquisition it's pretty much meaningless doing a dcf calculation on this company using the earnings because while well, the earnings are depressed because of that acquisition they did so in this case i'm going to play around with the free cash flow model right so there are three metrics that i use here there's a low a median and a high so at the moment if you look at amd the p /E ratio is 42 the price to book to the price to sales for and the price to free cash flow is 31.8 so 31.82 is still pretty high right now let's go look at the historical numbers for the company if i go to macro trends you will see historically they have been doing between 59 and then 54 and then currently sitting at around 30 but if you go back in history you will see well they were pretty much unprofitable so not looking that great if you look at the history so this is where you need to come up with your own numbers right so this is basically numbers that you will be comfortable paying a multiple that you are comfortable paying so in this case i'm going to use three multiples so for me let's assume i will pay 
20, 25, and 30 because this is a high quality company. To me, this is already very optimistic, right? This is not my conservative numbers at all. To me, this is this is very optimistic. That gives you an average price today of $52 with a low of 41 and a high of 62. Now, if you go look at the price today, you'll see it's sitting at 68. So even that is a little bit of a value to me. But this is where you can play around with the numbers, right? Let's assume you are very positive about AMD and you think that they will be doing 25 on the low side. 30 on the median and then 35, then obviously this changes a lot, right? Then all, then all of a sudden you're sitting with an average target of 62, which is pretty close to where we're at at the moment. So now the question is, will I be buying AMD or not? Well, in this case, I'm looking at AMD. It is a quality company. The fundamentals are looking good. It is a good quality company that I'd like to have in my portfolio, but the price has to be right. If I look at AMD right now and I compare it to other opportunities in the market right now, for instance, Meta or Google, then I'd say I'd be fucking crazy to buy AMD right now because you can get a better company at a much better price because to me in my head i'm saying well this company is pretty much trading at i think probably a fair value right now but it's definitely not bargain territory and i'm definitely according to my opinion not seeing a margin of safety in this stock so in my case i'll be passing on this let me know what you think in the comment section below if amd is the best buying opportunity or not to me looking at the market right now looking at other stocks that are out there at the moment i think there are definitely better opportunities in the market at the moment.